Are we on? Yep. Hey guys, welcome to Fridays with SLC. Yeah. <laughs> we're back again. We are back. And we're live too. That's Just what they remember tell us. that. We're live, so don't hold that against us. <laughs> uh, well, Diddy, what do we do today? Well, I we're going to start a pair of shafts. Uh, Everybody always asks about shafts. I think everybody complicates it a lot more than they need to. So maybe we can either simplify things or make their life miserable. One of the two. One of the two. Either way you guys want to go with this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to make a pair of shotgun shafts, which I think are probably the most uh, common type that people make nowadays and people wear. Uh, they have a zipper on them. And uh, there's not a lot to them. Uh, not as not as much as most people think. It, this pair is going to be pretty simple. The fringe and the and the leg is all going to be one piece. And I guess just know that you can bling it up as much as you want. Yeah, chaps you, are kind of a blank canvas. Yeah, you can you can make a lot of variations to this. And we've got a, a pattern pack for the shaps, and that's what we're going to use. I'm going to use the pattern off of those. I built it to what about three years ago three four years ago four years ago i think i was yeah. back there doing that yeah. when you did that so yeah, it's been wore, a while you wore that first pair i of did a, a day or two <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway we're going to use this same pattern for those uh, those shotguns here uh the pattern pack uh, itself is on is on plain white paper uh, this would be it here. right here uh, I don't think there's any need in spreading it all out, but I've transferred this to, uh, actually, I didn't transfer this. This is the original on the Bontex. And Bontex is a material that uh, the stuff you get might not be called Bontex, but it's all the same. It's just a heavy, fibrous type, yeah. uh, cardboard type material that makes really good patterns. Uh, and this one's been around for three or four years. And however long we've had this pattern. <laughs> yeah. So guys, just real fast, this is our chap and chink pattern package um, and instructions. It is item number 144-114, well, 10014, 10014. So 144-10014, if you guys want to pull up the chap patterns. There's a ton of information in this thing because we go over three different styles of chaps and then all the instructions on, on how to build them. So. Yeah. Just yeah, it's, it's got a pair of shotguns in it, which mm -hmm. is the ones we're going to do. It's got a pair of chinks in it, and it's got a pair of bat wings. Bat wings and chinks are basically the same, but a little bit different. <laughs> How's that sound? <laughs> same, but different. But anyway, th that's what, it, what this, this pattern is straight out of that book, out of that pack. Yeah. That's what we're going to use. But uh, this is, this is uh, the pattern that I drew on the Bontex. I've got the belt yoke pattern here and the, the back belt pattern here. And that's, I think that's all I need as far as uh, cutting this leather out. Uh, but uh, I also made a paper pattern here so that I can show you how to lay, I can show you how to lay out both legs out of one side of leather. Oh. <clears throat> leather wise, to, to build these, you will probably need anywhere from 22 to 26 square feet of leather in Gonna need it to be a big side. Yeah, it, it'll be a big side. Uh, sometimes you can get it out of a smaller side of leather. It just depends on the shape of the side itself. If right. cows would cooperate with us and grow They'd just be more, more square. Be a little more uniform, we'd all those, get along better. Those Wendy's cows. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna put this aside uh, right now. And, uh, this is a piece of leather that we picked. This kind of an oil tanned leather. It's a it's a really nice upholstery leather. It's about to, what would you say, three to four ounce? Probably, yeah. Three to four ounce, which is a good a good weight for shotguns. It's got shotguns. a nice pliability to it. Yeah, it drapes really well. Yeah. For shotgun shafts, you don't want anything with a lot of body to it because you'll they zip up, they close around your leg, and it's hard to bend your leg. You want to be able to sit down in yes. your chest. Yes. Or walk. Yeah. Or run. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get away from the bowl yeah. in the yard. Yeah, and these are, you know, you can use this same pattern for show shafts if you want to. This pair we're going to make are just general riding shafts. Uh, probably wouldn't use this leather for show shafts. But, uh, not blingy enough? Well, it's nice leather, don't get me wrong. But yeah, it's probably not blingy enough. <laughs> it's not uniform enough. Gotcha. But uh, anyway, first thing I'm going to do, I guess, is show you how to major for the pair of shafts. 
And to do that, we're going to have to move this table. Okay. And get out front here. Lyndon's going to have to cooperate. I'll do my best. <laughs> we'll scooch that guy. I don't, that really didn't get it too far out of our way, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, bear with us, guys. We're gonna have to do some some hand handling of our cameras yeah. today. Yeah. And I'm just gonna. <clears throat> normally, I would have a piece of paper here to write these dimensions down, but I don't, so I'm gonna just write it on this pattern. You just pull Kevin and just write it on the back of a piece of veg tan. Yeah, I could. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the measurements you need are a waist measurement, and by the way. Shafts are not made to go around like like your uh, your jeans would. No, they sit low. Yes, they're they're meant to go right below your belt line. That's that's the way most of them are made. Because usually you also have a belt on. Yes, and you want it to ride below that belt. Yeah. Otherwise, you you gain too much bulk there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So I measure the waist. I measure around the thigh, right at the crotch. Then I'll measure an out seam from right below the belt to however long we want these shafts to hang. Okay. Uh, if they were show shafts, they would hang pretty low. They would, right. You, they would drag the ground. But for a pair of general riding shafts, you need to walk around in them. You don't a want lot, to trip over you know, your fringe. So, so you don't want them to be about floor length. Okay. You know, and then you also need a measurement from right below the belt, right down the front of your pants to where you want them to break over your boot. Okay. And that's basically, oh, and another measurement around your knee. Okay. Uh, and that's basically all the measurements. Okay, here we go. So let's measure Liz. Gonna get let's measured see. today. All right. And I've got about 35 and a half inches there. Here. So this is actually really neat. So he's got his paper pattern here. He's going to write the measurements where he's taking the measurements and then he yeah. knows where they're from. Yeah. Okay. And your, uh, your knee, you want to put your leg up there and kind of bend your knee a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm not going to make this measurement real tight. I'm going to call this 16 inches. Okay. If you'd stand up straight. Let me measure from here to about. 18 inches. So 16 so inches we, around. We want to come. Yeah, right about there. That'll be about your knee measurement, and it'll be 19 inches. And turn sideways to me. Around your thigh here. Let's say that's 23 and a half. I want to make it 24 because your pants are pretty tight. Okay. We don't want them to be too snug. A lot of people like them just skin tight, you know, but that's not real that's comfortable. That's not comfortable, right? right. Yeah. Okay. You got to be able to move. Yeah. And then you're wearing a pair of high heel boots, which is good because most of the time people ride in a, in in a, a boot, boot with, a, with a pretty good heel to it. So I've got, I'm going to say 40 inches there. And there again, uh, for just a plain pair of shafts, you can cut, you can make them a little bit long. If they seem too long, you can trim them off. There you go. But, but we're going to say these are 40 inches right now. And in a minute, I'm going to put the pattern on you and see how that okay. pans out with the pattern. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go down the front here. We're going all the way down the front of the boot. Yeah, let's say that's 38 inches. Okay. That'll be about here. That's about right where the pattern is. Uh, Lloyd Pulver asks, do you use the same gauge as in the apron? Uh, I'm not sure what gauge you use. What is he gauging? <clears throat> what are you gauging? Let us know. We'll try to answer that. Okay, <clears throat> I think I've got all the dimensions I need here. Okay, and then it was 16 I've, around the knee. I don't know if we need to mark that anywhere. I, yeah, I did. Okay. I marked 19, though. It was 19 from here to here. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and then 16 around. This table's rolling around on me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fuck it. Now we're back to square one. Back. Back to where we started. All right. 
Oh, no, we aren't. Come back oh, out here. Oh, we got to do the. Yeah. Just kidding. Let's just see what it looks like. Oh. Let's turn around this way. This way? Hold the pattern right there. This is very technical. I'm not even going to change this pattern. I'm going to make it just exactly like it is as far as the length goes. Okay. I might. When they're done, I might need to trim a little bit off across the front of your boot. But lengthwise, that looks pretty good to me. Perfect. It was made for me. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing we'll need to change are the dimensions around your room. This way. Yeah. Okay. Oh, let's back in here. Good. Centered. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to do this just like a tailor put this around. It's beautiful. I like it. <laughs> Makes you look official. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now it's good if you've got a nice wide open area like this to lay your yeah. side of leather out on. That way you can see where you are. And uh, the thing that I try to do is uh, the side of your shafts on your out seam, I try to make it towards the back of the side okay. of leather. That's the side the, the fringe is going to be cut on. By the way, you don't have to cut fringe. No, you don't. But to uh, this side we're going to. Uh, that's the side the fringe is going to be on. The inside of the leg uh, will be down towards the belly. And your shafts will stretch a bit too. Mm -hmm. So Leather stretches. Es especially in your in the knee. Right. You know, after you bend your knee a lot of times you'll have a big old bubble. But sure. That's life. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah. Let's see here. All right. You another thing to keep in mind: don't cut two left legs. <laughs> <laughs> so Lloyd is talking about the thickness of the leather. Okay. Thickness of the leather. Uh, for an apron, I would use probably uh, a four to five ounce leather, wouldn't you think? Something with yeah. a little more weight to it. Yeah. You know, because uh, you don't lose a lot of mobility with just an apron. Right. But w when you've got a closed leg shaft, you want a little lighter weight. And there again, that's you know that's, that's a matter of preference. Some yeah. people want a real heavyweight shaft, and I guess that's their business. <laughs> we also have a question from Kevin Healy. What is the difference between working and show chaps? Uh, the type of leather you use, you know, the 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 look of the leather that you use, and basically the leg length length and how you finish them out. This this pair of shafts we're going to make kind of a what would we call them a crossbreed because I'm going to the the belt yoke and the back belt I'm going to tool on Ooh. on veg tan leather. Okay. You know, and that's pretty common on a on a show shaft, but uh, on a working shaft, a lot of times they, they they're just oil. they're just pretty plain. Yeah. You know, I would use the same material as the leg of the shaft to do all that with. A lot of times, you'll see some metallic leathers on a show shaft. Yeah. It'll be yeah, there. especially you like bronc shaft, rodeo type yeah. shafts. Yeah. You'll, you'll see that, but uh, there's not a lot of difference. Just just the way you uh, treat them, the way you fit them out. But anyway. I've got it, I can get both legs cut out here uh, with the, the fringe towards the back of the side. Uh, you've got to look, for, make sure you look for blemishes. This is, has a little scar here, but it's uh, It's healed, and it's it's not yeah, a weakness. It's, so. not, it's not a cut, it's just a scar, and that's yeah. fine because- That's okay. Them old cows are pretty rough on themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, now I'm gonna take a handy dandy little, dead weight put right there to keep our pattern in place okay and uh, okay first thing I'm gonna do I had this on you and 40 inches which is what I measured on you and the leg looked pretty good and that's right where this is 38 is right where that is so <clears throat> to alter the pattern I, we probably can't see it on here, but the the pattern itself has a zipper line. This will be the outside of the zipper on the on the outside of the leg, and that's what where we want to measure our 24 inch dimension to. So I'm going to have to cut this down just a bit. Cut that down to there, and as far as the knee, I was 16 inches there. We'll have to, I'm not going to go quite there. Go. So 
your measurement is from the zipper. Yes, from the zipper. So nothing on the, the outside of the leg changes. We're only altering, we're only bringing in the inside of the that's leg. Right. You want okay. you want the outside to go right down like the seam of your pants. Right. That's that's ideal. That zipper should be right down the seam so of your pants. This side never changes. We just take it off of that side. Right. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. Everything's set. So I'm just gonna draw this pattern right here, just exactly like the, the paper is. I'm using a pencil here. And really, uh, it's just marking the leather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can use a, uh, an erasable uh, pen, like a silver marker that erases if you want to. I'm using a pencil here just because it's easier to show you folks. We've got a couple of questions. Someone asked, can you hand pinch it or use a sewing machine? You can do either you want to. I'm sure going to use a sewing machine. And another, <laughs> another person asked about the deadweight you're using uh, and wondering where they can get one. So yeah. we, we sell a deadweight. These are Denny's deadweights probably since the early 90s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had them a while. <laughs> But um, they last well. Yeah, yeah. So we make a dead weight. If you just look up on our website, dead weight, it'll pull up for you. Um, or honestly, just make your own. This is just some. Yeah, lead is this, shot. Is this veg tan? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's probably a, a milled veg. Yeah, there. you want you want some sort of soft leather. You don't want it to be yeah. super firm because you uh, want it to kind of move around and. Their skin makes chunk. great ones. Yeah, it's very soft. And then very... just fill it with some lead shot if you've got yeah. them. That's yeah. really all that it is. Yeah. Sand's not heavy enough. <laughs> no, we tried that. We did try that. It it was a lightweight. Yeah. Okay. Now I've marked the difference here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't, but there's about an inch difference here and about two inches difference here on the pattern. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scoot the pattern back and match those two dimensions. So I'm going to go right here like this. Remember our, our outside dimension on the outside of our leg is going to stay exactly the same. And I'm just going to kind of scoot it down here. Match the bottom. Oh, that's easy. You don't even have to cut your pattern up. No. So you just keep reusing it. Yeah, you can reuse this pattern. I've got a paper pattern like this at home that I've had for 30 years. Nice. Uh, this kind of paper will actually, the more times you draw around, it gets a little bit smaller. It kind of the edge <laughs> curls off, you know, a little but, <laughs> but still, it works well. I've used it for a long time. But anyway, I'm not going to mark the other leg. What I'm going to do is cut this leg out and flip and it over to mark the other leg. So they're both the same and you don't have to guess again. And on the... If you'll notice on this pattern, I've got a lot of different marks, and one of them is our zipper line. But I'm going to mark that on the inside of the leg after I get both pieces. Yeah, we've got our zipper line right here. Yeah. So, get rid of a few things. We can put this down. I'm going to get that big cutting board. Kevin would have a heart attack if he knew I'd use a brand new piece of all <laughs> board for this video, but that's okay. He's had heart attacks before. <laughs> he came through it pretty well. <laughs> Alright. There we go. <clears throat> These are kind of just fun to play with. And you all can uh, Cut this with a utility knife or a pair of scissors if you want to. I get a lot smoother cut with a round knife myself. So that's what I'm going to use. And since the leather is down here, I'm going to start right here on this side. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, cut there where I can get a hold of it. When I cut it with a round knife, I'm not holding the, the piece of leather that the actual shaft is. I'm holding the piece I cut off. Because when you pull on this, you'll kind of stretch the leather. Mm. So I, And I don't want to stretch that leg out. Sure. Hey, Denny, someone said, I shoot fast drawing, made shields for my leg, and stop, stops powder burner. What? Sorry. He was wondering if chaps would work. For what now? Draw. So he does fast draw shooting. Sure. Sure it would. 
But I guess he burns his leg. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Make yourself a pair of shafts. <laughs> Nothing else. They they look cool. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> You'll look more the part. Yes. I think that Chris Andre does does some fast draw shooting. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Him him and his wife do all that competition shooting. It's quite it's quite fun. And they're uh, that uh, what is it mounted shooting? That's a big thing too. Oh uh, yeah. But shaps are. By the way, it's pronounced shaps, <laughs> not chaps, because a lot of people say chaps and. I say chaps. Gets on my nerves. <laughs> Those it, it's a Spanish word. It's from chaparreros. Oh. It's a Spanish word. I never knew that. Yeah. So we've just, we just condensed it down and now it's just a word, but it's actually just an abbreviation. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Chaparreros. 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 Denny, what are those things called that you put on your saddle on the bottoms when... On the stirrup. Tapaderos. Tapaderos. Yeah. And we shorten that down to taps. <laughs> People call them taps. <clears throat> All right. It's kind of cumbersome, you know, to cut these out because there's so much leather you're messing with. But It's really nice to have a 4x8 table, guys. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Man, that knife cuts so easy, Denny. It does, and, and shaft leather is very easy to cut. Yeah. Um, for some of the folks that are just not joining, they're wondering what leather you're using. This is the... About a three a, ounce? A, yeah, a three ounce upholstery type leather. It's got a little bit of an oil content to yeah. it. It's like a lightweight oil tan upholstery. Yeah. So, a little bit of a distressed texture feeling, nice and supple. You can squish it all up, give yeah. it a hug. Yeah. And it'll... It'll wear very nice. Yeah. Okay, we've got uh, the left leg cut out. Flip it over. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know where we're at. Yeah. There Inside. we go. <clears throat> I think this is just one of our odd lot of pole streets. It is. Because it's, it's kind of got this, this nasty, where it looks like it was rolled up and it set against a piece of brown leather, so there was a little bit of transfer here because of the oils, but... Who cares? Yeah. It was probably like three bucks a foot. Yeah. So it's very inexpensive yeah. leather. Boy, it's nice. It's gonna work well. Okay. So where's your and, pencil? And by the way, you you have to buy a big piece of leather to get two two legs out of one side, so you're gonna have a lot of remnants, but to, you can do a lot of things with the remnants. I yeah. think this is a twenty four foot size. I was gonna say I was looking for a a footage, but these are usually we usually get these in a full hide and then Kevin cuts them in half. So in in half of the hide, you're you're missing the footage. Yeah, I didn't see a footage. Yeah, it. so that was on the other side of the cow. Sorry, I messed up. Gen the generally, uh, yeah, these full hides will have a, a footage for the whole hide on them. You know, so they'll be like fifty some feet or sixty feet. Maybe. Yeah, those upholstery hides they can get pretty big. They need to cut large couch cushions typically, so they get some big big cattle. Yeah. Plus, it seems what? like South America just produces really big cattle. I know. What was that? I think that 60? one side of leather he had, it was like 80 square feet. It's crazy. It, it, one it side. It hung off all all the way off of the eight, four by eight table on all sides. It was a huge cow. Yeah. Yeah, we've gotten some pretty big. In veg tan specifically, you'll see you'll see pretty large sides that come in when we get our import leathers. But it's really common for just the sides to be 30, 35 square feet. And then we've gotten a couple before. I know that there's a picture way back on our on our Facebook page, I think, of a side that we got in that was like a 60-foot side of leather. Man. That was crazy. Okay, you guys, remember, I... Flop this over. This is the back Thanks side. <laughs> we don't want two left legs or two right legs. I had a guy a couple of years ago that came and he wanted me to help him pick out a side of leather for shafts. And uh, we got a piece of moccasin cow, which is really pretty, really soft and supple. And uh, he went home, cut two left legs. Oh, no. We didn't have any more. 
<laughs> well, he just had one rough out, one not. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's still looking for a side of leather to match that one. <laughs> Jenny, have you ever seen the show Walking Dead? Uh, I believe I have, yes. Uh, we've got someone that's saying you resemble a uh, character named Herschel. Okay. <laughs> Is that, I hope. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> and they said your voice even kind of sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I'm related. You haven't. You haven't had to been escaping zombies living in the woods no. for the last five years. No. no. We got Hagrid the other day, and now you're Herschel. <laughs> Hagrid and Herschel. <laughs> I used to know a guy named Herschel. Every time I watch you cut with a head knife, I just think that I need to work on my head knife skills. Oh, yeah. Everybody's like really in here. Look how smooth out. that is, guys. It, uh, I'll tell you what, if you ever actually just start using it, you you can't get better with it by not using it. I, yeah, that's, you know? that's a fact. But if you would start using it, pretty soon you'll start depending on it. I like glasses. If you ever start wearing glasses, you start depending on them, you gotta wear them from then on. <laughs> You're like, oh, I can actually see now. Yeah. But it does, that. you know, you can make such a nice smooth cut out of it. And it just looks so much easier than dragging a box cutter. It is, it like is. It just and you don't have those little, nice. little stop and start spots. Yeah. And the key to a round knife or a head knife is to cut all the way through with mm. one one stroke. Don't to try and go back and cut. You know, if you don't cut all the way through, mm. you can't help it. But try and cut all the way through. No problem. All right. Now we've got two legs. And they should be approximately the same size, same shape. Let's, let's they won't be exact. Uh, you can never make them exact, but that's all right. Uh, They're close you, enough. Yeah, you don't want them to be two inches different or anything <laughs> like that. But, uh, I mean, they'll be small variations. Oh, well, it's pretty okay. Pretty okay. Because leather is stretchy. Yeah. You know, so each it, part stretches a little bit differently too. Yeah. They they'll compensate each other. So, okay, that's all I'd need on the legs. So, I'm just going to kind of roll those up and put them aside. Now, got these two parts which I'm going to cut out of a vegetable tan leather. Got our yoke and our back strap, our yeah, belt. Yeah, the back belt. Back belt. Which will be this one right here. Ooh, it's good fit. Yeah. And this got a little discoloration, but I'm gonna tool it. You'll never see that. Perfect. So uh, let me see here. Denny, what what weight of leather do we have here? Uh, this is about six to seven ounce. Okay. Uh, you can use a seven eight if you want to. Five six is a bit light. Sure. You know, but six seven makes pretty good yokes and back belt because this yoke will go on top of that leather. So you're so if this is six. To ounce and that's three ounce. You got nine you ounces. Got nine ounces. That's pretty good. And this will be the same way. I'll use a piece of uh, that shap leather to line to that line with. It. So perfect. Yeah. Draw around this. Are we gonna get to put some bleeder knots on my chaps? Sure. Yes. Sure. We'll put some uh, We'll put some conchos back here instead of these yes. this four hole lace. Okay. And we'll put a bleed knot on it to tie those with. Okay, remember left and right. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. 
Because I, I checked this out. <laughs> you may have pre-planned this. Ooh, guys, sorry, that board is really white on here. <laughs> Um, we've got some questions about the round knife. What brand is it and what is the proper way to Someone said they had to get seven stitches one time. Don't have your knife in front of your, or your hand in front of your knife. That's the most important thing that I can tell you. Uh, this is a, an Osborne round knife. You know, uh, there are a lot of custom makers make yeah. custom round knives that you can uh, spend three or four or five hundred dollars for, and that's great. But uh, this is what about a sixty dollar knife? Yeah, I think they're sixty, maybe seventy, depending on the one. But I've been here close to eight years, mm -hmm. I think. This is the knife I picked off the wall the first time I was here. <laughs> <laughs> it works pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to cut these out. Yeah. So I guess if they zoom in on this. Then he's keeping his fingers that are holding his project behind the knife. There yeah. we go. And there again, uh, cut all the way through. If you've got if you've got the tip of the knife into your table, no matter what surface you're using, your knife can't get away from you. The minute you release pressure and let that knife glide out, it'll just it's dangerous. <laughs> Fred asked if when you get those uh, packs that are ready to come out and ride a horse. Well, Fred, if you'll have me, I'll be there. Who's asking that? Fred. Fred Burschauer? Yeah. Well, Fred. <laughs> like he said, chops instead of chops. <laughs> Fred, I haven't ridden a horse since I was about four years old, so I don't know if it'll go well. But we can give it a shot. <laughs> I bet Fred could fix that. I bet he could. Fred, I, Fred rode a horse one time, I think. <laughs> Fred Burschauer well, you know, is he, a national, or I think he's a world. He won a world championship this year, just a while. Did he? Yes. Well, congratulations, Fred. I was gonna say he comes in here looking like he rides some horses every once in a while. He's usually got his spurs on. Fred and Darcy do a lot of that work. They come in here a lot. They do. They're good customers of ours. Darcy is a fine, fine tuber too. Have you ever seen anything she's done? Um, I don't know if I've seen anything in person. I talked to her time and again. She is good. She makes me want to take lessons from her. <laughs> Fred was the one that taught me how to do my basket weave into a V-shape. And then, like, come off of a V-shaped spine. Which I do a lot on my sheaths, and I really like. All right. I've got two belt yokes. A right and, and a left. A right and a left. <laughs> yes. Just always double check that. Every time you're done with something, be like, okay, did I, did I do it right? Because you don't want to tool this and then have to do it again. So, like, catch it, catch it before. Like, if you cut one out, whoops, then that's, you know, life. But don't tool it yet. Yeah. And another thing, uh, when when I tool these, I will, whatever, whatever pattern I use, which I will probably draw a new pattern for this, but I'll cut it with my swivel knife on one side and use it as a tap pattern for the other side. There you go. That way they'll both be the same. Nice. Now this... I'm going to straighten off one piece of this. And then I can use a strap cutter to... Uh, and then you just have to round your ends. Work smarter, not harder. Did you right. have another question about... Uh, Jesse said, I like to pull the leather back across my head knife. Is there anything wrong with that? He likes to what? He said he likes to pull the leather back across my head knife. Back across it. Maybe he pulls his leather instead of pushing the knife. Is that what you mean? Uh, you can't. In some instances, yeah, you can. I, I do that. You know, everything. Every time you do something, you might do it a little bit different. But for the most part, I push my knife. You know, if you pull your leather, sometimes you don't pull exactly right. But if you'll recall in our uh, video that we did on uh, filigree. Mm -hmm. 
pull your leather. That's right. Stuck the knife in the board and pulled the leather. So it, sometimes it's, it's good to do that. I think it's in your basket. Okay, now I know that belt yoke is two in, or that belt is two inches, so I'm going to set two my strap inches. gauge at two inches. Notice I'm pulling the, the strap that I'm cutting and not the piece that I'm cutting off. All right. Well, that was simple. That was very simple. All right, I'm not going to cut the end of this until I until I actually decide how long I'm going to make them, which mm -hmm. which we will do later on in our video series on shaft <laughs> making. So we've, uh, I think we've got all our. Oh no, we've got a couple more parts to cut. Okay. We've got the front belt and the front belt billet to do, and I'm going to use a little heavier uh, leather for that because I'm not going to line these. Gotcha. So, so you probably got like a nine ten there. Yeah. Yeah, this is about nine ten. And let's see. As always, we're using Hermit Oak. Yeah. Can't tell. Uh, I got spoiled. <laughs> now you can use any kind of leather you want to, and you might get along with it really good. But uh, once you start using something that really works for you, it spoils you for using anything else. I'm just cutting a piece of this off to kind of straighten it off. Now I'm going to set this at three quarters of an inch because that's how big, how wide I want my uh, front belt and billet. Danny, when, when was the first time you worked with Hermit Oak? Uh, when I first went to work for a saddle maker, that's what he used was Hermit Oak on yeah. his saddles. He had little Hermit Oak tags that he hung on it. Every saddle that he built yeah. proudly. Sure. You know, and without being specific, I'm going to guess that 90% of the custom saddles and, and tack and custom carved leather goods that are made in this country today are out of Herman Oak. I would imagine so. It's uh, when you talk to saddle makers, that's the best. Yeah. Well, you know, Wicked Craig makes good leather too, but it's it's a little different than the Herman Oak is, and uh, some people like it, some don't. You know, everybody has their own preference. And this is what we sell, so we kind of push it, but it's one reason we sell it is because we like it a lot. That's know? right. Okay. We're all set for that. Now, we've got some time, so... Let's lay out for our zippers. Okay. One of these on. That's great. Now on the pattern, it has the zipper line marked. So that's what I'm going to mark here. <clears throat> the top of the zipper is the most important part. You know, because that's where your zipper starts. And where it ends down at the bottom is, is a lot of times optional. So we're working on the back of the leather here? Yeah, yeah, I'm working on the back side of the leather, yes. And he's just going through and making his little... Yeah. Marks. I, on this on this pattern, I punched a little hole all along the zipper line, and I'm just making little marks through those holes. I'm assuming, Denny, that if you buy the paper pattern, those little spots will be marked uh, on yes, it. Yes, I'm sure they are. Let's open it up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they are. Yes, they are. It's a dotted suede patches on the inside. Do I put suede patches on the inside? Yeah, I think they're asking me if you take it. Sure. You, you have artistic license to do anything you want. Uh, or if you have a specific need. Yeah. So. Uh, the only thing to be aware of when you put something on the inside, you add bulk to it. Uh, you know, a lot of people might put a, a patch on the 
either on the inside of the thigh here mm -hmm. or on the knee. You know, if a, like a lot of guys when they're working cows, they're on they're on their knee a lot. You right. know, uh, doing whatever to calves. You know what they do to calves. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and a lot of people, you know, put it on the inside of their thigh because that's what rubs the saddle. But the main part about the shafts are they give you a little bit of grip against the saddle and a little better feel, you know. Sure. So to me, putting a, a, a pad on the inside of them is sort of... Uh, I almost put a pad on the outside and then you can change it out as it wears yeah. through. Well, horseshoe and shafts, uh, we almost always do that. Yeah. You know, put a pad on the outside because they have their that horse's foot with a nail sticking out <laughs> of the foot on there and they'll drag it across there and pretty soon they've worn a hole in it. Right. Just put a new, sh new patch, patch on, on them. Right. But yeah, okay, back to the zipper. On, the, on your pattern, it's marked with a dotted line. So... So, so, right, so as you make it, what Denny's just done is he's punched holes all the way down that line so that he can go through and mark them down yeah. onto his leather and then draw a line. Yeah. Because it's a little bit contoured. Yes, yeah. And a lot of people say, well, that's, you know, because right outside the zipper is where the fringe is cut. Uh -huh. A lot of people say, well, that's really short fringe, but you don't cut the fringe out straight. You cut it at an angle, which oh. we will, which we will yeah. see. And your fringe will be plenty long. <laughs> Trust us. Yeah, trust us. Even if you don't, trust us anyway. <laughs> Just give it a minute. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all make sense one day. Okay. okay. Now I've got this line drawn. And just for the sake of everybody else, I'm going to connect the dots here. I love that game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you put the zipper on, you'll you'll discover you don't need to connect the dots because the zipper's going to sure. follow a fairly good line anyway. Okay, let's do the other leg now. And if you'll notice, I'm doing it on the inside of the shafts. Same scenario, just line things up the best you can. And that top is what counts. So then he's marking that first hole, but then he's drawing a line yeah. just to the outside of it, or the inside? Just to the inside. To the inside of it. Yeah, because that this line is the outside of your zipper. Okay, so, so you're going to line that up on the outside, and the right. zipper will go to the inside. Right. I'll show you here in a second. I'll show you how to, we can, we're going to have time, we'll, I'll show you how to pair the zippers, too. Yeah, we're just tootling right along yeah. here. <laughs> okay, here's my... I'm doing this for you guys. <laughs> kind of for me. Yeah. <laughs> kind of for you. Okay, so we got that much. Now I'm going to put the pattern away. <clears throat> I tell you what, as a leather crafter, storing your patterns is what gets to be a little bit cumbersome after a while when you start making a whole bunch of stuff and you've got all these templates and sometimes they're real big and you need to put them places. Yeah. That's always fun. You know, we we fought that. I remember when, when you were over in R&D with us, <laughs> we fought that. You know, we had patterns hanging all over the wall. When I had my own shop, I had one wall full of just patterns. Just patterns. And it was one pattern on top of another. Whenever I wanted one, it was always the one against the wall. Yep. Took you half an hour to find it. Yeah. Where did I hang that? We thought one time about to an architect's uh, cabinet, mm -hmm. you know, with those little thin shelves in it, and we never did do it. But, we did. But for a shaft pattern, it probably wouldn't have worked. You'd anyway. have to get a really, really big cabinet. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Danny, I got a quick question for you. Okay. Troy is asking, Troy, Brent, Right on that. That's, what is a good way to cut straight? He says he has problems cutting straight lines. With a head knife? Uh, Possibly. Then. If you're cutting it, an actual straight line, you can use a utility knife and a, and a straight edge, like a like a metal yardstick. That's what we use in yeah. the shop. I say sometimes Denny will cut a small straight line with your head knife, mm -hmm. but you don't typically cut a really long straight yeah, edge with your head knife. That's pretty hard to do. Yeah. When I straightened off that side for the belt last week, I did it with a head you knife. You did. But it wasn't perfectly straight. Right. Either. And you kind of did it off the table so that you yeah. had... Yeah, I yeah I did it kind of free fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Practice. Practice. 
Okay, I knew I'd forget one tool here. So we've got some zippers, and these are just, we sell the chap zippers. You kind of choose the length that you need for whatever it is yeah. that you're making, and they come pre-assembled. I've got 28-inch zippers here, which I'm pretty sure are plenty long enough. Let's go up here. If we start at the top, follow this line. That'll be perfect. I'm not even going to cut these. Yes, I am, just to show you guys how you can cut them. Okay. But I need one tool first. Can I go get it? Sure. You can talk to these folks. I'll chat with y'all for a minute. <laughs> so what are you guys doing this weekend? <laughs> Chad, have people have people hailed in from their respective locations today? Uh, yeah. Do we know where in the world we are? There are some, uh, some people from the UK. Everybody's talking about how cold it is. Yeah, it's terrible and freezing, and I hate it. As Kevin says, the icy tentacles of death are here. So that's, I think it was all of like 10 degrees this morning and it's just supposed to keep getting colder. We're in Missouri, guys. We don't, we don't have this kind of weather here. <laughs> I'm not excited about it. So uh, there are people from Oregon. I have the Texans that they're getting their one week of winter. <laughs> Minnesota. Uh, oh. said it was negative 33 right now. So. No. Yeah, I don't have any room to complain with you guys, but I will anyways. <laughs> Freezing in Iowa, negative 9. Ooh. So we're staying inside this weekend. That's what I'm gathering. We're going to we're gonna do our leather work. We're going to sit by the fire. We're going to have a nice relaxing weekend. <laughs> Not outside. I know I've got a friend in New York, and he sent me a picture of his car covered in a foot and a half of snow this past weekend. Razor Blade says it's summer there in Australia. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Denny's back. We can stop talking about the weather. <laughs> the weather. It's terrible everywhere. It is. Some people okay. are negative 30 degrees. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you a story. I lived in Craig, Colorado for five years, and uh, one morning, and it was about this time of year, I woke up and it was 40 degrees below zero, and I walked outside and I thought, man, this isn't bad. The sky was clear as a, the clearest blue you've ever seen, but there were ice crystals just floating in the air everywhere. It was cool. Oh, wow. But uh, I got in my truck. I was going to go to work, <laughs> and I turned the key on, and it went... Nothing. That's the sound I heard. Nothing. <laughs> I pushed my hand up against the dashboard, and it was it was a '76 Dodge pickup. And Did you the, freeze to the dashboard. Yeah, the the <laughs> dashboard was foam rubber that was covered with vinyl. Okay. I pushed against it, and it went <laughs> and shattered that that vinyl. Oh my gosh! I got out of the truck and went inside. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that's the coldest I've ever experienced, and I thought, man, alive. But it didn't feel bad. Yeah. Actually, I could have gone outside in just my shirt sleeves for a few minutes and not felt bad at all. But it was just so cold. Oh, yeah. You couldn't tell. I know. Your body was just in shock. I know. But this guy, it was so neat, those ice crystals yeah. floating around. So uh, Tony says it's 30 degrees in Louisiana. He's Tony! Good for him. Yeah. Okay, folks. <laughs> Go uh, back to work, Tony. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> He's just hanging out with us. <laughs> that sounds good. Montana. Yeah, you get ten. Ugh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's I gotta I gotta say this. It's really hard to do a live deal like this somewhere other than your own work area. Yes. I spent all week thinking about what all I needed to bring over here to do this this week. Because you, you and just I forgot a tool. There you go. <laughs> a tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you did okay though. Yeah, I did. He always he gets his little blue shopping basket and he fills it all up with the stuff that he needs. Here, like he little red riding hood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now the first thing we're gonna do, if if I was gonna cut these zippers, I would go up here and I'm gonna be, if you'll See here, the zipper is down just a hair from the top so that the square edge of the zipper doesn't go over because the the way the edge of the shaft is cut, it, it there's kind of a point there. 
So that's where I'm going to start this zipper. And I'm just going to kind of go around here and follow the contour. So we're doing of the zipper the upside down right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, we're gonna that's, trim I'm just measuring right now. Okay. That's all I'm doing. But say, this is perfect because this, this zipper would end up about right here. But I'm going to cut this off an inch just, just to show you guys how you can cut it. Okay. And I'm, I'm also, okay. Let's scoot a little bit so that we can get our overhead shot. There we yeah. go. Okay. But say, I'm going to cut this zipper right here. I'm going to cut it off. So what I'm going to do is unzip this just a little ways, and I'm going to take these side cutters, diagonal cutters, as some people would call them, and I'm going to pinch this little zipper apart. So oh, you just pulled that right off. Yeah. Because we're working with pre-assembled zippers right, right now. Right. Yeah. And these are those YKK zippers. They're about as good as you can buy, I think. They're number 10 chap zippers yeah and that this is what they're made for all right i don't know if you can see this let me so razor blade says it's 89 there he lives in australia listen here razor blade you don't need to how cold does it get actually i'm curious like when and when it's winter with you how cold how cold do you see it down there in beautiful australia you can let us know <laughs> okay what i'm going to do now I'm going to take these side cutters and cut some of these teeth off. Everybody watch your eyes. You yes, watch probably your eyes. wear yeah. goggles. Wear goggles, yeah. Don't do this at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got that done. Now I'm going to uh, get this little zipper stop that I took off and put it back on right there where I... You know what, Denny? I had no idea that you could change the length of these so you can. easily. You can. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut right here like this. Cut kind of like this. See what I have there? You don't want to trim it off flush. Yeah. You want to give yourself a little yeah. bit of room. I'm going to take a thread burner. The thread burners. <laughs> and just singe the edge of that zipper. Now when I, when I get ready to actually attach the zipper, I'm going to cement this that little tab back so you okay. have a finished edge right at the end but anyway nice. okay i've done that now i need to do the same thing to the other side once again protect your eyes yeah and these these little zipper teeth are kind of brittle so they will fly mary asks what do you use to knit the zipper teeth off uh, a pair of side cutters, uh, diagonal cutters. So razor blade said going under 41 degrees is extremely rare. Well, that's perfect weather. Okay. I, see, then he's, then he's gone. He's going <laughs> to. I got to tell you something that I saw earlier. Some guy said, you folks up in the North Country. Your weather got drunk and is down here in my front yard. You need to come and get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. All right. Now our zipper is, is, is shortened. That's all I'm going to do to that. But I don't know if you realize this, but both of these zippers are going the same direction. And you don't want that to be on your shafts. You want one to go one way and the other to go the other way. Because they want to zip from the top down. Right. They want to zip closed going down. And if you don't pair these zippers, they'll one will go down, one will go up. Okay. If, if if they zip up, then while you're riding, they're going to work their way down pretty soon. You're going to be floppy legged. Gotcha. <laughs> it's okay if they kind of work their way up a little bit. Yeah. But not yeah. down. Okay. The way to change that. This is really hard, you guys. You look at this. I'm going to take one of these zipper stops off. Well, do we still need to shorten this one, or are we not going to worry about it? I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. I'll just you, have one you, zipper that's longer. You all know how we do this. <laughs> all right. And I, I, the one that I took off is the one with the slide on it. So I'm going to take this slide off like this, turn it around like this. 
put your little zipper stop back on. Man, all now the little your, things. Your zippers are paired. You have a pair of zippers which which will zip the correct way. Now you have a right and a left. Yes, a right and a left. You, and you understand why we need them a right and a left. Because if you don't, one will go down, one will go up. You can't tell until they're both apart. Because they have a front side, yeah. right? Because they're the front and the back to the zipper. Well, there might be. I Is don't know. I never really paid much attention. Well, because the pull. There's a front and a back to the pull. Yeah. But if you see, the pulls are opposite. Yes. And before they were on the same. That's, that's exactly right. So your right. pull would be on the wrong side. Yeah, on one of them. Yeah. Right. Because you want, do you want the pull to be on the... The back piece or the front? You want the pull to be on this piece. Okay, so the in the inside back yeah. is and where the pull, pull is. around and, and you uh, hook them like, After you've done them a few times, it's just second nature. Right. Pull that and zip them shut. Guys, that was, that was, that paid for this video. I don't was, know if you was, knew that, but that right there. Was that enlightening or That was enlightening. <laughs> Blew my mind a little bit. Okay. okay. I think that's about all we're going to do for today. Yeah. Uh, we're going to let that sink in for you guys. Yeah. Um, Ali said, I've been sewing garments for 25 years. I just learned how to shorten heavy duty zipper stay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, good, good. And Salvador Camera on YouTube said, can you please tell Denny I love his beard. He looks like a master craftsman looking for the Himalayas. <laughs> well, thank you, my friend. I appreciate <laughs> that. I fooled someone, haven't I? <laughs> Awesome. Any more questions coming through about the little bit that we just did? A little piece of magic. Someone asked what kind of leather you guys were using again. But they can watch the video from yeah, the beginning. I don't, I don't. <laughs> you can use you can use virtually any sort of oil tanned or chrome tanned leather that you want yeah. to. We said we have a whole range of biker leathers that you can use yeah. for, for chaps, um, yeah. all sorts of fun stuff. You can use really a lot of upholstery leathers too, mm -hmm. like. Split leathers, split yeah. leathers make, show chaps, biggest part of those are made out of a split leather. Okay. You know, kind of a suede type leather. Yeah. Because there's a good color choice in them and they're really soft and plush looking, you know. They flow well as you're yeah. riding your brock. Yes. yes, Before you get your neck broken when you yeah. fly off of it. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Anything else? Are we good? Okay, guys. We will be back next Friday. Next Friday. And we yeah. will take it from here, and we'll see yeah. how far we get next Friday. Yeah. So. Hopefully, we'll get... I don't know. We might have them stitched Danny, are you going to go ahead and tool your your yes. yokes? I will try and have the, have the belt yokes and the, and the back belt okay. done. So, we're going to be doing some sewing next week. We'll probably have a sewing machine in here yeah. to do a little bit of sewing and con some construction. So, awesome. Okay, yeah. guys. See you next week. Bye. Thank you.